Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Hit the like button and please subscribe and share. I would like that very much and it really does help my channel. Uh, I did a video on this the other night and this is uh, pertaining to the same subject about the New York City homeless bulk at plush migrant facilities for the migrants. Yes. On Tuesday, New York City Mayor Eric Adams opened a giant tent city to accommodate the influx of migrant males and homeless people are balking at the plush amenities. After declaring a state of emergency and requesting state federal funds to deal with migrants being brought into the city, Adams set about constructing the huge facility at Randall's Island to shelter and care for the record number of migrant males in the city. Emergency Management Commissioner Zach Isco said the project will be pivotal, pivotal in helping the migrants figure out their next move. We needed a different type of operation that gave us the time and space to welcome people. Provide them a warm meal, shower, place to sleep, to understand their medical needs, to rally, then work with them to figure out what their next step is going to be, said Isco. Members of the homeless community, however, are upset that the migrants are being treated better than they are. And it's the same picture that they had before, and uh, it's a video that you all can go watch uh, if you'd like to. And it's on CBS. Uh, New York. Amenities at the new facility include fluff and fold laundry services, three culturally appropriate, appropriated meals per day that will rotate regularly, and a right selection of entertainment options, including Xbox, games, consoles, ping pong tables, televisions, and board games. And I've already read that. Migrants also have, they've got access to 12 phones with free international calls. This is a place people can come, rest, relax, kick up their feet after the journey that they have been on. So our people's not been on a journey, sleeping on sidewalks, curled up in a pouring down rain, freezing to death in the winter in a cardboard box, barely any covers, barely any heavy clothing. Yeah, this goes on just about repeating everything that was in the other article the other night. And Baron, B-A-R-A-N, Brian or Baron, Hines, who lives in a homeless shelter on Randall Island, could not believe the luxuries are offered to the migrants. They've got Xboxes. Get the F out of here, Hines said. Hines contrasted the migrant facility with the shelter he is living in. The building I am so at awful, Hines said. The smell is awful on every floor. That's the building that he's living in. The bathrooms are terrible with P everywhere and ST everywhere, Hines continued. There are flies in the bathroom. The tents look five times better, he added. The city built the migrant facility specially for migrant males who have overwhelmed homeless shelters since southern border states began shipping migrants into the city earlier this year. And what I said on the other video, I'll say again. Why not take care of our people first? You know, but the migrants are here now. So you got to help them. You know. Biden asked for this. Why isn't Biden helping him? Why isn't Biden forking over some money to help these migrants so New York City can take care of their own that are sleeping on the sidewalk and in cardboard boxes and freezing to death in the winter? Good questions. Where's the answers? They're treating these migrants like they were absolutely invited to come and live with us. I don't think we asked for this, did we? But Biden did. 
And what's Biden doing about it? Nothing. Everybody's fighting over migrants now because they'll be cheap help. So what's going to happen to the race that we fought so hard to get for the working people in the factories and anywhere else they work? Hospitals, anywhere, nursing homes. It just don't make sense to me. But now look how the migrants are being treated and our people are still uh, laying and sleeping on the streets. I don't know. It don't make sense to me. But oh well, who am I? I'm just a YouTuber. I still know. Now, I did a little um, a deal on this um, about Cary Lake and... Uh, I found the video because I kept it, but um, I just don't think I will go that way. I'm going to wait a while yet. Yeah, I'm going to wait a little bit. This one here, <clears throat> I found si uh, kind of interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, Mike Pence looks to challenge Trump supporters in 2024. It has become clear in the aftermath of the Trump administration that there is no love lost between former President Donald Trump, former Vice President Mike Pence. Trump has expressed strong disapproval of his Vice President's refusal to challenge the result of the 2020 election, and Pence has landed a few less direct, but nevertheless unmistakable, verbal jabs against his former bo uh, former boss. The animosity combined with Pence's clear political ambitions has led to speculation he might launch a 2024 presidential campaign whether or not Trump decides to throw his hat in the ring once again. Earlier this week, Pence added fuel to the fire with his response to a question about whether he would support Trump in a hypothetical GOP primary race. Well, there might be somebody else I'd prefer more, he said, with a smile and a shrug. <clears throat> he went on to stress that he is not yet thinking about the 2024 race as next month's midterms, midterms rapidly, rapidly approach. I need more coffee. <laughs> what can I tell you is, I have every confidence that the Republican Party is going to sort out leadership. Pence said, all my focus has been on the midterm elections. It will stay that way for the next 20 days. But after that, we'll be thinking about the future, ours and the nation's, and I'll keep you posted, okay? Without directly ref re referencing Trump or the former president's many supporters on the right, Pence also used his recent forum to call for a return to traditional Conservation, conservation, C O N C E R V A T I S M, conservations, conversation, I don't know, which he said is bigger than any one moment, any one election, any one person. Warning those on the right to avoid the temptation of unprincipled populism, he shared his belief that it's absolutely essential that we articulate a vision for the path ahead. While any prospective 2024 announcement appears to be a long way off, it is worth noting that Pence has not dismissed the speculation that he is considering a White House bid. As for Trump, he has been public, publicly toying with the notion for months. Earlier this month, Trump reported reportedly told attendees at a fundraiser at his golf, sort, golf resort in Florida that he would make an announcement very soon and promised that his supporters would be very happy with his decision. I hope it's the right decision. Yeah. For Pence, not, you know, why he chose not to stay on Trump's side has always puzzled me. Why, when he was right with 
Trump all the way, then all of a sudden turn his back on him? That puzzled me. Has it puzzled anybody else? Leave me a comment. Let me know. Yeah. And now he's willing to step up and put his bid in for president? Hmm. Isn't that interesting? I wonder if Pelosi's behind him. Never know, do we? They always say, while well, the cat's away, the mice will play. I call them rats. I'll be back. God bless you. And you are a blessing. Laters.